investors diversify. Investors diversify by forming uh, portfolios. Uh, by forming uh, portfolios. A portfolio, I hope you're able to write here, a portfolio is a collection of investments. A portfolio is a collection of investments. A portfolio is a collection of investments or a collection of what here? Assets. Now, what is the major objective of forming a portfolio which is in line with this risk and returns? Why should we form a portfolio? This is CPA or CS, section three, financial management, financial management, financial management. Why should we have an investor forming a portfolio? Why should we have an investor going for a bundle of investments? If you remember very well, during from those old ages, our mothers used to be told that they should not go to the market with all the eggs put in one basket. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. In short, they wanted these great mothers of ours to diversify their risk, to spread, diversify means spread, to spread their risk. So take these eggs, if they are 30, 15, this basket, 15 on this basket. So that along the way, if you are to knock against some hard place like a rock, and then you tumble down, this poor lady or mother tumbles down, it is only chances are perhaps one basket that may be affected. Because as, as she falls down, she's trying to protect something, right? Right? So don't ever try putting all your eggs in one basket. This many baskets that you're putting up, that you're trying to develop your nests on, are what we are calling a portfolio of investments, many baskets like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand and understand this once and for all. We are saying that the major objective of forming a portfolio is to diversify risk, is to reduce what here? Risk. If, for instance, somebody, I have a friend of mine, by the way, this friend of mine retired from Kenya Airways, and he was given about 18 million Kenya shillings. Kenya Airways is a very good, it's among those companies that I know of, despite the problem it, it is in. It's among those few companies that I know of, which have got uh, very good retirement packages. So the gentleman got 18 million. Came, the whole of it, this was during those crazy days of uh, apartments. Yeah, went to some place, put up a very nice apartment. Three floors, very nice, good finishing. He enjoyed rent for about a year. After that was during those ages of uh, Kidero, years of Kidero. Kidero's machines, tractors, earth movers came along, calling, telling these people that they had the land, unfortunately, that you build this house of yours on is not your land. So we're giving you like three days, if possible, carry your house. How do you carry it? So at the end of the day, what happened? Demolitions, like that. That gentleman, that gentleman, that gentleman, I mean, he went crazy. He became a madman. Why do you think he ran mad? He ran mad simply because he never knew that you should never put all your eggs in one basket. This 18 million, if I was the one, I would have thrown these into some paper assets, like buy Safaricom shares, three million. Another two million, in this case, yeah, do something. So I'll have, of course, real estate is good, but I can't have everything in that. Out of this 18 million going to real estate, two houses, no. I'll have about five million. In this case, they're going to just a small house, but beautiful house, which I should be able to get some quite handsome rental income. Right? And of course, these bodies of ours, ladies and gentlemen, also need some kind of a return. A return. 
Take like three, who's in him as an arm. Take like three hundred thousand or even, even a million. You've never maybe blown out that cake. Go on there, in this case, you're party up with your family. Perhaps that is the only thing that you will be left remaining with after all the other things I've done, that memory, I mean. That's a joke, but it's good to spread, ladies and gentlemen, your risk to various investments, to various assets, if possible, assets in different what your industries, assets in different industries. So people form assets to do what you to reduce risk. I hope you have taken that point down. That uh, investors form portfolios uh, with an objective uh, of minimizing uh, business risk. With an objective uh, of minimizing uh, business risk. So tell us there that business risk has two components. Business risk has two components. Business risk has two components. These have really been examined in CPA section three theory questions. The components of business risk full colon number one we have the systematic what here risk systematic risk and then number two we have the an systematic risk the an systematic what here risk the an systematic risk so we start with systematic risk. Well, Germany, if I was to draw this on a diagram, this is how my diagram will look like. This is how my diagram will look like, like that. And then I'll have this down here, which seems to be flattened, like the way we're praying for flattening of the COVID curve, like that. So this flat area here is what we call the systematic risk. Systematic what here? Risk. And then, of course, this other segment is what we call the an systematic. The an systematic what here? Risk. So we have here, we have business what here? Risk versus number of what here? Versus number of securities. Versus number of securities. Versus number of securities. The more the securities are shares, these are bonds, investment vehicles. The more the securities I have in various baskets, various companies, the bigger my portfolio. And the bigger the portfolio is, the lower the systematic risk becomes, and systematic risk becomes. So the risk will keep on reducing, but of course it cannot reduce forever. There is that component of risk that can never fade away, that can never go away, that can never reduce. So we come with this risk until we hit a plateau like that. This particular point where we have a, a continuous uh, uniform risk is what we call, this continuous uniform risk is what we call systematic risk. So tell us their systematic risk is the risk that cannot be reduced. You're writing there, systematic risk is the risk that cannot be reduced, that cannot be reduced, or diversified, that cannot be reduced, or diversified, or diversified through portfolio formation. That cannot be reduced, or diversified through portfolio formation through portfolio formation it is that component of business risk it is that component of business risk that exists in all companies that exists in all companies in all companies that exists in all companies or industries, in all companies, all companies or industries of an economy, of an economy. And the thrust cannot be avoided. And the thrust cannot be avoided or eliminated. And the thrust cannot be avoided or eliminated. So if you go to A, you are saying I don't want foreign exchange. 
if I don't want foreign exchange, then I should avoid what here. I should avoid companies which do import stroke export businesses. So you say, let me run from this company. If I run from this company, go to company A, I still get that particular risk there. I move from A, I go to C, I get that particular risk there. Then this particular risk that cuts across all companies, all industries of an economy are called a systematic, the name system uniformly distributed in the entire economy. You can never run away from that kind of a risk. Good example, examples include number one, inflation. Number one, inflation. Number one, inflation. And then number two, we have war, war, W-A-R, war. If war was to erupt here, just like it erupted in Southern Sudan, we had the banks closing, we had the hotels closing, we had all businesses will always be affected by war. And that is why we keep on praying that eh, this thing, war, should never visit us in Kenya because it cuts across, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing, like this corona is a bad thing cuts across. There is no sector that has not been affected. All sectors have been affected. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, uh, you are writing there, unsystematic risk, unsystematic risk, unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risks are also known as company specific risks. They're also known as company specific uh, risks. They're also known as company-specific risk. Company-specific risk. They affect, they affect specific companies of an economy. They affect, they affect specific companies, specific companies of an economy. They affect specific companies of an economy. And thus, investors, investors can avoid them. And thus, investors can avoid them by avoiding, by avoiding such companies. Hey, my friends, what are we saying? We are saying, ladies and gentlemen, here that are systematic risks because they affect specific companies. We can easily, because they affect specific companies, we can easily, we can easily run away from them. And that is why you are seeing a systematic risk doing what they review, reducing, and systematic risk do not do what here, they don't reduce. A good example of a systematic risk, if you're asked, is exchange rate risk exchange rate risk it's not all companies that are affected by exchange rate risks no if you are not in the business of handling foreign currency like rcm college all our students in this case here pay us in kenya shillings all our students like the guys who are here online zoom you paid us in kenya shillings we shall pay our lecturers in kenya shillings so we don't get access to we don't need them the dollars so we, if you want to avoid, if you want to avoid this kind of uh, foreign exchange risk, then come and invest at RCM. Invest at RCM. So ladies and gentlemen, what are we required to know about portfolio management, returns and uh, risks? Returns and risks. We are supposed to know number one. Number one, how to calculate expected returns in situations of uh, risk. We are supposed to know how to compute standard deviations. We are supposed to know how to compute covariances. And for us to be able to understand really this area, I would want us to go to our past papers if my admin could take us to the past papers there. So for those of you who have already bought our revision kits, For those of you who have already bought our revision kits, 
just go there straight away in the risk and return and you'll be able to go to the first question. The first question, what are we told there? Question number one. Question number one. Question number one, quite popular in your past papers. The financial manager of light and shine wishes to determine the expected rate of return from a proposed investment, uh, proposed investment project. The expected returns from the project are related to future performance of the economy over the years as follows. So you can see economic scenario, the economy could either be strong, moderate or grow or low growth. And then they have given us the probabilities of occurrence. And then they have given us the rate of return. So they want us number one there, we determine expected return. So allow us, ladies and gentlemen, to put this question down, to put this question down, to put the question down, allow us to put the question down. So they have given us key things there are, they have given us uh, the state of the economy, which could either be strong, strong, aha, we have moderate and low. Just copy, no problem, moderate and low. And then we have, ladies and gentlemen, any question? I don't get examples of unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risks are those risks that don't exist in all companies. Good example will be foreign exchange risk. You see, ladies and gentlemen, foreign exchange, if you are to get like a million US dollars today, you see there are million dollars today, uh, when you're going to exchange, for example, somebody promises you like, I say 1 million US dollars in six months. The today's exchange rate will not be the same as tomorrow's exchange rate. So you keep on in this case here wondering, wondering, by the time I'll be receiving this money, how much will I be able to get in form of Kenya shillings? So there is a risk that you could make a loss. But who normally is, uh, in this case here, exposed to such kind of a risk? It is companies that are in the business of making what? Import, or, or rather of importing or exporting. Companies which are handling foreign currency. It is not all companies in Kenya that have got that risk exposure. There are companies that do not have uh, any foreign money. Like I gave a very good example of RSA. You don't handle foreign money. So you don't have that risk. So if you look at this foreign exchange risk, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it only exposes, it only exists in a few institutions, in a few institutions, and therefore it is company specific. It doesn't cut across like the entire world here, industry, the entire economy. Any other question? Any other question? Milka, are you guys, are you able to really to hear me well? Are you able to hear me? What about the other students? Uh, we have Penina, yes. Other students, other students. Other students, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, uh, too many. Which page is that question on the revision kit that we can answer? Most of them are saying yes. Trust you me, the students who are saying they can't hear us very well, you're not having a very good internet connection. Two things. In most cases, when you see, when you're not able to see the board, and then you're not able to hear very well, your internet connection is not very, very good. It's not very, very good. So perhaps what we could do, like Milka has requested us, is to have this recorded, is to have this recorded, and then we share with you now the video. But just try to change your internet provider. Like myself, I have lots of respect for Safaricom. Safaricom, you mean as a mini. When you have to me a gun, when you have me a gun, Safari Koma Magan Nima to me. When you have to me a gun. 
internet provider unatumia gani So Brian Musyoka is saying vision and audio breaking. Vision and audio break. But if you look at uh, Brian, Brian, if you look at uh, people here, we have about 13 students. Are they not 13 or how many are they? How do we check there? There are 16 in total. And it's only three students who can't hear me very well. You see, there must be a problem from your end. Perhaps you have not even updated your Zoom. Perhaps you have not updated your Zoom. Yeah, Brian is saying he's using Safaricom. Galaxy can't be able to hear you well. What is the problem? from the side eh? O'Brien is very far away. Mm. We have to solve this thing over carry on which page? Which page? So if you have this revision kit, you simply go to page number 199, isn't it? Page number 199, page number 199, where they have given us, where they have given us, where they have given us, if you have this kit, you go to page number 199, page number 199, this kit you're selling them for just a thousand shillings, a thousand shillings, and remember the moment you buy a revision kit, we'll be able to allow you to attend our live classes, two of them for free, two of them for free. Now let's continue. So we have, ladies and gentlemen, uh, strong. They have given us probability, probability of 0 0.25. And then we have moderate, moderate. What do we have here for moderate? Moderate, we have 0 0.5. And then low, low, we have 0 0.25. And then they have given us the returns returns they have given us the rate of return the returns given here ladies and gentlemen returns returns they have given us what returns there number one they have given us 15 percent so 15 in form of percentage moderate in form of percentage we have 12 and then we have eight and then they want us to give them expected returns they want us to give them expected return expected returns are also known as average returns why do we have to compute average returns? Because we don't know which state of the economy will prevail. If strong prevails, we shall get 15. If moderate prevails, we shall get 12. If low prevails, we shall get 8. That's why I want to work with an average of this. How do I get the average? I will take 15 plus 12 plus 8 divided by 3. That would have been the case if I did not have probabilities. When I have probabilities like this, ladies and gentlemen, what I need to do is to calm and they calculate expected return by taking the returns that you have, you multiply them by their corresponding probabilities. So you take the returns that you have times the corresponding what here, probabilities, and then you sum. You sum. So if that is agreeable, I can see the probabilities with their corresponding, the returns with their corresponding probabilities. So the first one here will be 15 times 0.25, plus 12 times 0.5 plus 8 times 0.25. We must keep on adding because we are talking of these with that risk or or with that. This times this or this times that. So come and give us an answer. We have a calculator here. So we are talking of 0 0.25 times 15 or rather 15, no problem. 15 times 0 0.25 plus 12 times 0.5 plus 8 times 0.25, which at the end of the day gives us 11.75 like that. If you wish, you can put back the percentage like that. 11.75. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please allow us to go to question number two. 
we have been able to get the expected return as the examiner wanted. So we go to question number two, at least we get some background before we look at our first paper questions. So question number two, the expected returns from the project are related to the future performance of the economy over the period. Uh -huh. So now we are reading another one. Now just go, go to question three. Question three. So question three, ladies and gentlemen, Betty Muye has invested 75% of her funds in shares of company X and 25% in shares of company Y. The following probability distribution relates to the shares of the two companies. So we are given, then let us write this down for all the students here to see. We write down for all the students here to see, ladies and gentlemen. We write this down for all the students to see. So they have given us, well, then you will need to see that figure of 11.75. That figure is key. Okay, so that figure is key. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. Here we are, we've been given Betty Muye. We have the state of the economy, the state of the economy. So state of the economy, what do we have? We have boom, boom. Then we have steady, steady. And then ladies and gentlemen, we have the famous what is slump, slump, slump like that. And then they have given us probabilities. Probabilities, we have 0 0.2. 0 0.6, and then we have 0 0.1 here, yeah, 0 0.2. And then what they have done, they have given us returns of X in form of percentage. They have given us returns of Y in form of percentage, in form of percentage. So they're telling us that this lady, if she goes for X loan, and then the economy is booming, we get 24. This, will, this one will be given to you in an exam. So 24, 12, and then we have zero. And then we go to Y. So for why would we have here? We have 530. We have 530 there. And then the last one is minus five, minus five. So ladies and gentlemen, now given this information, number one, they want us to give them expected returns of X. And then we have expected returns of Y. These ones are not touching them at all. Those two, you should be able to give me the expected returns. You can try getting for us the expected return. Just try, just try. I want to see whether there is any student who will be able to get expected returns. Who will be able to get any expected returns. Let's see. Is there a student who will be able to get expected returns? Is there any student who will be able to get expected returns there? I've already shown you how to get expected returns where you take the actual returns given times their corresponding probabilities, times their corresponding probabilities. There's a student who has already gotten 12. Ah, these guys, they're bright. These guys are bright. So we have uh, actual returns of X, 24 times 0 0.2, 24 times 0 0.2 plus 12 times 0 0.6 plus 0 times 0.2, and most of them are able to give me what figure? Expected returns of X, most of them are able to give me a figure of 12%. If you wish, you can put the percentage back there. Uh -huh. Let's try, it's good to confirm. It's good to confirm. Let's try this. This is 24 times 0.2 plus, 12 times 0.6 plus. We have zero times 0.2, which will end up giving me 12 years. How about the expected returns of Y? I will come and take five times 0 0.2 plus 30 times 0 0.6 plus minus five times 0 0.2, which I'm so sure most students have been able to get. What figure did they get, ladies and gentlemen? Which figure did they get, ladies and gentlemen, for Y? 18%, eh? Thank you very much, 18%. So that is what they need us to do in part one. How about part two, my friend? If you could take us straight away to the question. Part two, what do we have there, somebody in part two? In part two, they want us to do what we were doing in a high school, my great student. They want us to give them the standard deviation. They want us to give them the standard deviation. I want to see whether there is any student who is able to remember the standard deviations formula. 
Let's see whether we have any student who is able to remember the formula of standard deviation. In the comment section for the students who are following us through Zoom, you simply make a comment there. The students who are following us through Facebook, which we shall be disconnecting any time after this. Now that it still lasts, I would want you to go to the comment section and give us the formula of standard deviation. The formula of standard deviation. The ones following us on Facebook, of course, we are disconnecting because we want you to come and join our online Zoom classes where we only charge Kenya shillings a hundred. Kenya shillings a hundred. Kenya shillings a hundred. So is there somebody who knows uh, the formula? Is there somebody who knows uh, the formula? First of all, the symbol for getting standard deviation is like this. So like now this is a standard deviation of X. Write that symbol very well. You write it this way, like that. Zero and then you pull a tail. Please don't write uh, the symbol. And if you get somebody drawing something like this for standard deviation, this is a, a joker of a student. This is what we call mitochondrion, not standard deviation. Standard deviation here, we are professionals. We always talk of simplicity. We will talk of simplicity. So our standard deviation, ladies and gentlemen of X, listen and listen to me very well. Standard deviation. Standard deviation. So deviation means you're subtracting. So in this case here for deviation, I'll be talking over Rx minus Erx. It is a deviation over the X values from their mean. Remember Erx is the expected return of X, the mean of X like that. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what I will do, ladies and gentlemen, is to come, if you remember from high school, this deviation is a special one. It must always be squared. And for average, in Paco says, it's either you divide by n, or in this case, you multiply with what here probability, because we have probabilities, you shall multiply there with probabilities. And these deviations are normally many, meaning, ladies and gentlemen, that you must come and sum them like that. You must come and sum them like that. And then at the end of the day, at the end of it all, it can't be a standard deviation if it doesn't have a cap. That cap is very important. It's called a square root. It's called a square root. This is a formula of standard deviation that I would want you always to remember my great students of RCM, to remember my good students of RCM. So with this at the back of my mind, now I should be able, ladies and gentlemen, to give you the deviation here. What I need to do is to come and get the deviation of X. So I can see these are the actual returns of X. So what do I do? I'll come and create my table. I hope they'll be able to see here. We have 24, we have 12, and then we have zero. So minus, minus, minus. Expected returns. Expected returns you guys were able to give me expected returns from up there. From Roman 1, you guys were able to give me expected returns. What do we have here for expected returns? For X, you gave me a figure of 12. So remember, if it's expected return of a particular security, it doesn't keep on changing. So the expected return will remain the same. So this is 12. We have next 12. 12 like that. So it'll come straight away following the formula. What do you do? You square. And then, ladies and gentlemen, come and incorporate the corresponding probabilities. So we have here time 0 0.2 times 0 0.6 times 0.2. We're incorporating probabilities. Basically, we're incorporating the risk factor that I would want the good students to give me the first figure there. I would want good students here to give me the first figure. Is there anybody who is able to get us the first figure? I can see a student telling me 28.8. What I need to do is to come here, open or rather on first, open brackets, ladies and gentlemen, 
So we have 24 minus 12 rows squared times 0.2, which will end up giving me 28.8. How about the second one, ladies and gentlemen? The second one, somebody I can say 12 and 12. Is there somebody who is able to get a zero here, Caro? A zero there. We go to the next one, ladies and gentlemen. We have open brackets here. We have zero minus 12, close brackets. We have squared times 0.2, which will end up giving us 28.1 again, 28.8. So please, as per the summation, I want the summation first before I take away the square roots. So I want the summation first of all. So 28.8 times 2, which gives us 57.1 here, 57.6. Yeah? 57 so this 57.6 in mathematics will be called the variance. This is what we call the variance. This is what we call the variance. And once you have the variance there, for you to be able to get the standard deviation like that, you will come on top of the square root of the variance. It will be the square root of 57.6 like that. The square root of 57.6. So could you kindly give us an answer? Kindly give us an answer there. Square root of 56. Square root of 56 gives us 7.589. Is there somebody who got 7.589? 7.6 is good to round off to many decimal places, like three or four for accuracy. Thank you very much. And I would want you to take this opportunity, like two minutes, you calculate for us the standard deviation of Y. Kindly calculate for us the standard deviation of Y. Kindly calculate for us the standard deviation of Y. So for the students who are following us on Facebook, we have just told you that we have a very good platform. It's called a Zoom platform of teaching students real, live, online classes. And we happen to be charging only Kenya shillings 100. Just 100 like this, you are sorted out. Per lesson, 100 per lesson. What you need to do is to come and join us in our WhatsApp group. And of course, up there, we shall be able to attach our WhatsApp group link. Please come over there and we shall be able to share so many materials with you. Otherwise, thank you very much.